Now, another informative video from the NASA Archives. Start with Mr. Abbey and have him give an overview of his experiences in Apollo. Mr. Abbey. Uh, thank you, Mark. Uh, well, I think uh, looking back, uh, the space program as we have come to know it really got started uh, when our uh, friends in the Soviet Union launched uh, Sputnik back in October 4th of 1957. And that caused, uh, I think, a lot of consternation in the Western world that uh, the Soviet Union had that kind of uh, technology, caused a lot of concern. And uh, the next year it led to the formation of NASA in October of 1958. And uh, shortly after uh, NASA was formed, uh, the Mercury program got started in December 1958. And of course the Soviet Union had continued to uh, do uh, rather spectacular launches and had launched animals and had also started a, a man program. But uh, in 1961, a new president came in and uh, he uh, brought, came in with an administration that had uh, a lot of promise and was going to make great changes. And uh, in January 61, he was sworn in as president. And about two months later, uh, uh, another event occurred that really caused a lot of consternation again when Yuri Gagarin was uh, the first human to fly in space, orbit the Earth, on April 12th of 1961. And then about a week later, uh, there was a abortive uh, invasion of Cuba that embarrassed uh, the administration. So. Uh, the new administration under Kennedy was uh, really uh, concerned about trying to do something that would uh, change uh, the, the outlook of uh, the way the things were going. And uh, at that time, they had formed a space council that was headed by uh, Vice President Johnson. And so President Kennedy uh, asked Vice President Johnson to uh, look at coming up with a, a proposal that would give us an opportunity to do something that would at least give us a 50-50 chance of uh, doing it before the Soviet Union. And about three weeks after uh, Yuri Gagarin flew, Alan Shepard did a suborbital flight. And uh, three weeks after that, uh, that flight, the, pre the Vice President had come back to Kennedy and recommended that we uh, take uh, astronauts to the moon and safely return them to Earth. And on May 25th of 1961, uh, President Kennedy spoke to a joint session of the Congress and said we're going to go to the moon and do it by the end of the decade. And uh, at that time, we'd only flown one Mercury flight, that suborbital flight. John Glenn didn't fly till the next February, and that was our first American that had orbited the Earth. And uh, so we got underway trying to figure out how we were going to get to the moon. And there was a lot of differences on the approach whether we do a direct ascent or we would uh, put together uh, stages in orbit. Uh, but an individual at uh, Langley Research Center, an engineer there named John Huboat, came up with an approach called uh, Lunar Orbit Rendezvous. And uh, it, that approach was not given uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of attention. And so he wrote a letter to directly to the deputy administrator of NASA and uh, said that this was the approach that ought to be used. And uh, he gave that to uh, Brainerd Holmes, who was head of space flight in NASA at that time. And uh, not a lot of action occurred, except George Lowe did get a chance to look at it, and he thought it was a good approach, but not much action was taken. And uh, finally, uh, George Miller replaced Brainerd Holmes as head of space flight, and he brought a new deputy in called Joe Shea. And uh, the deputy administrator of NASA Robert Siemens gets asked Shea to take a look at this approach. And Shea uh, looked at it and looked at it sounded like a, a reasonable approach and a good approach. But he had to convince the director of uh, the Marshall Space Flight Center, Werner Von Braun, and also connect, really convince Bob Gilruth, who was center director of the Manned Spacecraft Center, which is now the Johnson Space Center, and convince them. And it took about a year of uh, get it going back and forth. and. Finally, uh, in uh, the summer of 1962, we had decided on the lunar orbit rendezvous approach. And lunar orbit rendezvous, of course, is uh, what we ended up using, but 
Uh, in order to do that, we had to really uh, get experience on doing rendezvous and doing dockings and uh, build up experience that we weren't getting from Mercury. We continued to fly the Mercury flights, and uh, the last flight was 1263, and uh, we started a new program, Gemini, which was a two-man vehicle that was going to give us the opportunity to do rendezvous and docking in space, and also develop the new systems that we needed in order to do Apollo, the fuel cells, for example. And uh, the Gemini program was started, and we ended up flying 10 Gemini flights. And uh, then uh, after the last Gemini flight, first flight was flown in 65, and then the uh, last flight was flown in November 1966. And so Apollo was going on all during that time, and uh, Gemini turned out to be the essential step for Apollo to give us all that experience and learning those techniques, learning how to do the rendezvous and give us the systems we needed for Apollo. So the first flight of Apollo was planned in February of 1967, right after Gemini had been flown. And that first flight uh, we had on the launch pad and uh, normally before a launch we do a countdown demonstration test. And we were doing that, uh, that test and uh, January, about a month before the flight. And uh, we had the crew on board and we have everything just like it is on launch day. The hatch closed and in Apollo we were flying with 100% oxygen. And uh, at that point we were really not paying as much attention to uh, traffic in and out of the crew module as we should and wiring had gotten frayed. And so during the, during the, uh, the countdown demonstration test, or the wiring, there was a spark. We had a lot of nylon inside the vehicle and in 100% uh, oxygen that, that burns very well. So uh, we had a, also a inward opening hatch, which was not good. So the crew was tried to get out of the vehicle, but they weren't able to. So they ended up suffocating because of the smoke. But uh, we lost that crew and uh, that set the program back Certainly, it didn't look like we were going to land on the moon by the end of the decade, but 